You're watching Explore Tulsa. My grandmother had a big wall clock in her house. An Ansonia wall clock had a terrible gong to it. Wang, wang. I used to love that clock and that's the clock I wanted. Well, when she uh, went into the nursing home, I asked for it. My cousin got it and I asked her if I could have it. When I started my clock store, she said, no. So <laughs> I decided that on a pastor's pay, I decided to buy a clock at the auction company for $35. And I took it home and I made all my mistakes on it. I fixed it. Uh, Harold helped me a little bit, I think, uh, fixing this clock up. And I sold it for $170. And I went, well, I could do this. And I wasn't even gonna get into clocks, but they was adding the paper for a clock guy. <laughs> well, I answered the ad. And so what I did is I went and decided that I could go to antique malls and have them pick up clocks and collect clocks for me. And then once a week, I'd come and get them. And between Harold and I, we would fix them and then bring them back. And the antique malls would um, uh, charge the money and then pay us at the end of the month. Well, what happened was I started with five or six antique malls and we got completely inundated. I decided to call the business the clock store because I'm kind of a simple person and I don't want to have any fancy names. It's just the clock store, you know. And then the store grew and grew and we decided that if I were to get work done, I couldn't be sitting talking to people all the time. I had to be in a repair center. So we rented a warehouse where we fixed the clocks. That's all we did. But people found us and kept coming, coming to have us fix their clocks. And now we've moved into this place where we can fix and have our school and uh, do all sorts of things. The school was born out of necessity. Uh, my friend Harold Smith and I went to a conference and we woke up in the middle of the night and decided to go to the Waffle House and we sat and talked about people who had disabilities who needed, needed to uh, have jobs that clockwork would work really well. Well, since I had dyslexia and I always worked my hands because everything was visual, you know, I could put things together and, and do things, but I was always a hands-on person. And to me, I thought that, I talked to Jonathan that we find people that were dyslexic they wanted to learn the trade and we could teach them how to do clocks. People with dyslexia like to put things in order and take things back and a clock is always that way. And then we talked about the business being so, there's so many clocks coming in that we need people to hire. Well, how are we gonna hire them if we don't train them? So we put this whole idea of disabilities along with hiring people for our place and we went to the Department of Rehabilitation Services and started a clock school able to teach somebody how to make a living with their hands is important. You know, we got too many people out here on the street the way it is. Well, we always build it as a school that was inside a clock store. The clock school is inside a functioning clock store so that the people who are going to the school uh, get taught lessons, but they can watch some of the people who are working on clocks to see how they do that. Most of the people who work for me help in the school to make sure that these people with disabilities and anybody really can learn how to fix clocks. I'm a, you know, I mainly a teacher. That's what I was, uh, I do. I come in normally uh, when we started off, I was in every day and then it just got down to work. I'm in twice a week, four hours a day. And I normally teach uh, on the guys on what to do, what not to do, and how to get something done. Fixing memories. That's the whole byline of my business. We fix memories. We really don't fix clocks. We fix memories. 